Welcome back to that dad guy. It is May the 21st, 2022. As uh, you know from yesterday's video, it's a, a Victoria Day long weekend here in Canada. So I don't have any uh, work to do on Monday. So we're going to answer some questions. That's usually what we do on Saturday. So there's a few questions that are out there. I want to say thank you to everyone who has liked and subscribed and uh, left comments to make these videos possible, sharing with your friends, doing anything like that. I don't know what you guys are doing where you are. Uh, I've got visitors uh, here this weekend and uh, yeah, looking to have a good time, just catching up with friends and family and the usual things that you do when you have company over. Uh, the weather's great today. It is about 26, I think we're gonna have today, maybe even 28. My neighbor next door is uh, redoing his roof. So if you hear some pounding and hammering in the background, that's what's going on there. Um, yeah, the usual stuff that you have in your neighborhood on the weekend. I mentioned that uh, there was going to be a um, Celtic festival coming up. It is actually going to be in June. So June 17th, we're going to hopefully get down to that. I'll show you what it's all about. There's going to be some caber tossing. There's going to be some musical acts that are there. So we're going to do that. There's another festival coming up shortly too, which is um, Inspire. So they paint things on different buildings here in town. And uh, we'll show you what kind of artwork has been put up over the years. That's what I want to do. At the end of June, we also have the Rib Fest that's coming up. So this is John. <laughs> John's one of my oldest friends. Uh, we've known each other since we we're itty bitty yep uh, my mother and his father were good friends in Truro in Nova Scotia so he and his wife have come up to visit for the weekend and I roped him into helping out with this video today why not his claim to fame is that he is a superstar as far <laughs> as a uh, in the movie industry movies uh, in Nova Scotia just do not happen without John's work uh, he's been a part of that his voice is famous worldwide now so uh, you may hear him in different YouTube videos or um, the starting of movies. If you've ever heard, there was once a time when people came to visit you and you had it, that's his voice. <laughs> well, that one might not, that was actually my voice, but maybe there was another voice that you would have heard that is John. Um, so yeah, this is John. We went to university together. We shared a, a couple uh, apartments together. Sure did. Um, yeah, whenever I get a chance to be in Halifax, we try to get together. So on the videos you saw when I was in Nova Scotia working, I went and saw John. Yeah, we I, enjoyed some great hot pot together. Yeah, I didn't do a video that time, but uh, maybe next time I will. Maybe uh, we'll introduce, we'll see how he fares in this video. And then we'll see whether or not we introduce him in some other ones too. Yes, hopefully I don't end up on the cutting room floor. There you go. <laughs> As you know, most of the time I don't like to edit my videos, so whatever happens in this video is, is just what you're going to get. So it might be us bantering back and forth and going completely off the rails for a while. That tends to happen when we get together. Um, but we're going to start first with a few questions that are out there, because that's why you may have tuned in. And uh, you may decide not to tune in ever again after this video, so if that's the case, thank you for uh, your once subscribing and the comments that you used to leave me. And I hope you have a good life. But if you do enjoy this video and you want to continue, there'll be more to come. So let's start off with a question. And John's going to read them and ask them to me. All right. So we'll get started. Let's just get right to it. Um, so I'm looking here. I see Eric asks. Uh, okay. Now, John normally has glasses. Yes. So we're going to talk about that now. <laughs> so he's going to read the screen. So if these words don't make sense, it's because he can't actually read the words. I will attempt to, uh, you know, not ask nonsensical questions. Ah, here we go. Wouldn't, uh, wouldn't having a printed label also give you more room for non-address related writing? Okay. So this is in relation to a question that came up about postcards. Um, I asked whether or not people enjoyed having a printed label with the address on it versus a handwritten one. When I send out stuff, sometimes my writing is so poor, it's hard to see, so, so I have to slow down. So Eric has a good point that if you put a label, which I got a pack of labels right here, I haven't used them yet, but if you do put a printed label on your postcard, you are gonna have more room to leave messages for, you know, what's going on out there. So enough people have responded that they prefer to have their postcards handwritten, so that I think I'm gonna continue doing that and uh, leave the labels for envelopes. 
All right, let's uh, check that was out. On the floor. <laughs> let's check out another question. <laughs> uh, Stamp Bits asks. In a recent video, you mentioned that you could not mow your lawn during the month of May due to bees. Is this restriction for your city, province, or all of Canada? I have never heard of this. All right. So, Mark, um, it is not a restriction that uh, everyone's put in place. It's basically just to try to help the environment. The city has asked us not to mow the lawns during the month of May in order for all those wildflowers that grow up in your lawns, like the dandelions and the violets and things like that. Um, to encourage bees to be able to get out there and do what they do best and to uh, help the environment that way. So is it an actual ordinance or is it more just a strong, no. requ strong request? Yeah, it's just a guideline. If you look yeah. around the neighborhood now, you're going to see people that have immaculately green lawns and have pulled all the dandelions and that's what they like to do. Right. Um, I will say when we pulled in last night, uh, my wife Patricia and I, the one of the first things we noticed is how nice your lawn looks with all the purple flowers in it. Uh, yeah, I think it looks better that way because... Uh, as soon as I mow the top off of me, you're going to know it's just a, a lawn of green right. weeds. That, so uh, I'm going to try my best, and I have over the last few years, to try to put seed down and, and grow it. But in the end, it's just lawn. And uh, if it looks nice now, then that's great. Yeah. I mean, it keeps me lazy. So yeah, not a uh, guideline that everyone has to follow. Just a, a request to help the environment. If you can do your part, do your part. For sure. All right. A, oh, we've got another question from Eric. Uh, in a follow-up to your video about RSMC, about the RSMC gadget that helps you reach across the passenger seat, do you bring it home with you or store it at your mail sorting station? Okay, so that is referring to the RRD, which is the reaching device that uh, RSMCs or uh, rural suburban mail carriers have to use to get the mail out of the mailboxes right. so when you're reaching across. So that thing is supposed to be returned to the post office at the end of your working day. Uh, some people will leave it in their cars all the time, but uh, if it got stolen, you'd be responsible for it. So you kind of want to put it someplace safe. So have you ever had to use it to keep surly uh, dogs at bay and people? And people, all? yeah. I don't have to use one because I have a uh, route that has less than 12 roadside mailboxes. Okay. And if you have between 12 and 249, then you get to use it. And if you have more than 249, you get a right-hand driving vehicle by the corporation. Ooh. I've never ridden one of those. Have you driven one? Yeah, when I had a route in Sackville that required one of those. So okay. I had a CRV that came from Japan that was 15 years old. So it's not one of the uh, the mail trucks or ones that you see with the right hand driving. You actually got a yeah. There are like ones a, of those out there. They're called Gremlins or whatever. They right. they are really old and they fall apart. They don't have any air conditioning or anything in them. You've just got a regular. I, vehicle. I got a yeah. uh, new one that they got from Japan, oh, and they're nice. actually in the process now of. Um, getting a whole fleet of right hand drives for rsmc's okay. that will be different It'll be kind of like an ice cream truck where the sides roll up right, and they yeah, pull yeah. the mail out the side when they pull up so they'll be really nice cool i don't know if we'll ever see them in the maritimes but whoever gets them will all enjoy right. them i think all right let me just have a look here i just don't want to miss any questions uh i'll just do a little dance for there we go <laughs> all right um Eric seems to uh, have a lot of time on his hands these days, so uh, we got another question from him. If you were a professional baseball player, what song would you choose as your walk-up music when you went to bat? Actually, I thought about this one. I looked at the question early, and Eric uh, told me to think about it. I think it was a good one to think about. Uh, I wanted something that was going to be kind of timeless. That was what I was going on. So I was thinking maybe a Beatles song, because I like the Beatles. Uh, you want something that's kind of upbeat. But then I started thinking about most of the walk-up songs, like uh, Mariano Rivera, he was the closer for the Yankees during all their uh, great runs in the 90s. He had Enter the Sandman by Metallica. Nice. You know, it's got that cool, strong beat when you come in and you have it ominous. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, 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 dun. So I think I'd want Little Bones by the Tragically Hip Ooh. because I'm Canadian, so I want nice. that to be represented. Uh, Little Bones has a real great intro to it yeah. but there's not a lot of speaking at the first so well, I yeah, think... you, you got a pretty lengthy instrumental in intro on that one yeah so That's as nice. a musician i think you could appreciate that no absolutely so that was my take hopefully eric uh i don't know if it'd be yours or not i was thinking maybe something by rush or another canadian artist i was going through some of the great bands uh, you know i liked uh, northern pikes and blue rodeo and um, there's a whole slew of them that i used to listen to all the time but a lot of them were a lot slower, and 
I, I couldn't see something that would get you motivated that way. I feel like Little Bones has really got that nice fast groove at the beginning to especially get the Canadians all riled up for yeah. sure. I I have to say I had put nowhere near as much thought into that over the last <laughs> thirty seconds. I was thinking, man, ah, how about you all ready for this by two unlimited? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could have something like that, and I'm sure that's been someone's walk up music. Um, yeah. When it comes to walk-up music, I think it's got to be something that gets the crowd into it, too, and represents who you are. I think of, like, uh, the movie Major League, when Wild Thing used to oh, come yes. out of the pen, and they right, played right, that. Right. For Charlie Sheen? Yeah, for Charlie mm -hmm. Sheen's character when he came out. So, that's a typical walk-up music. Nice. All right. All what right. do we got next? I think we just got one more, one I believe. One more. Um, yeah, I don't think I've missed anything here. So, I will just have a look. Another question from Eric. I know as an RSMC, you get paid based on the length of your route. But given the rise of gas prices in the last year, do you get a gas allowance to set up to, sorry, do you get a gas allowance to offset this steep gas price increase? All right, so RSMC is a rural suburban mail carrier. That's my job. Um, we get a uh, vehicle allowance that's part of our package. So we have... Um, a section that pays for the sorting of the mail, the delivery mail. So that's one part of our pay. We get one which is called PCIs, that's your point of call. So if I have to go to someone's door and uh, deliver a parcel, we gotta get something for that. We get something if we have to do a lock change on the community mailbox. And we also get something for the <laughs> amount of flyers that we put out. Okay. And then the third part of our paycheck, you, don't, you have to be an accountant to figure out our paychecks, but the third part is the vehicle allowance and that's something that's static. They just say for this route, you travel, say, 40 kilometers a day. We're going to give you, a, I don't know, 44 cents a kilometer for that. And a little bit of money for wear and tear on your vehicle. They've worked out an average of what, you know, right. how much brakes you'd go through or tires you might have to do in the course of a year. So that's what they get. It's static. Even though gas prices have doubled in the last year here in Canada, um, there's been no change in what we get right. for our gas allowance. We have a petition currently going to Ottawa to hopefully remedy that. Right. Because it, it's costing a, a small fortune right now to drive your vehicle. And that's the downside of us having to drive our own vehicles rather than having a corporate vehicle, which would have a corporate gas card. And you right, of course. With that. So, like I said, without getting into the particulars of your salary or anything like that, you say there's all these various sections that build to make your how you get paid yep. now is that a salary or it, it's not an hourly rate or anything like that or no for the rural side we get a salary so right. when we bid on a route it, it says exactly how much the route is going to pay us okay and it the only increases we get are based on our union contract so if they say well we get a two percent raise each year then you're guaranteed that every year it'll go up by two percent for the life of your contract okay. what do you mean by bid on a route like uh, when you first come into Canada Post, uh, there'll be a, a route that's offered up. Like, to a, a mail carrier? Well, to, 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 a, to anybody, right? To a postal worker? or Yeah, to... it goes internally first, and then it's based on seniority. Oh, okay. So if I applied to say I wanted to go in and do a route in Truro, if I wasn't the most senior, it would go to someone else. But if I was the most senior person, then I would get it, and I would know ahead of time how much that route paid. Right. So that's how it's it's worked. Now, if I was on the urban side, do they get paid on an hourly rate? So if they go onto a route and it takes them eight hours, they're going to get a set rate. But if they go up and above the eight hours, they're going to get time and a half for doing that. Right. Where we don't do that. So if our route's worth eight hours, we get paid eight hours. If it takes us 12 to do it, we only get paid for eight. That's unfortunate. It is unfortunate when it comes to Christmas time. And sometimes <laughs> people work for 16 hours and they're not getting paid those mm. extra hours. But it is something they're fighting for because they want to try to make the urban and the rural equal. Yes. As a guy who works in the film industry, I very much enjoy my overtime. Yeah. Yes. Well, I know there's a part of our pensions too. Well, our, our pensions uh, are federal, but we get the best five years. Right. That's what it's based on. And then with that, they multiply the number of years of service you've had with the company. So it's possible to do a very little for a very short period or for a long period of time. And then in the last five years, work, if you're on the urban side, you could work two routes at the same time, double right. up on your overtime, just to make sure that those last five years you made a lot of right. money. And then your pension would be based on... Those last five years. Yeah, those five years, right. not the 25 years before <laughs> that you did nothing. <laughs> so there are some flaws in the system, and um, people know how to manipulate them. On the rural side, we don't have that option, um, because if we do a second route, 
we will get more money for that, but we're not going to get overtime for it. Right. Right, right, right. Do people do multiple routes? Uh, if they have smaller routes, yeah, sometimes right, they do. Okay. But it just means that they would be doing a route that would be vacated, either that they couldn't fill in with a permanent employee or that was someone who was off on sick leave and oh, they didn't okay. have a, a temporary to cover for them. Cool. Nice. Yeah. So those are the only questions we have. Yeah, printed. I don't think I missed anything, so... Got any questions for me? Anything you want to throw out there? Things you've always wanted to know? <laughs> Things that you want to bring up from the past? <laughs> Whatever happened <laughs> to your uh, green outfit? <laughs> My green outfit. All right, so what he's talking about is that we went to camp together at Malagash Bible Camp uh, in Nova Scotia. You'll also see some videos on that. Uh, a couple of years ago before the pandemic was the 50th anniversary. So I did some promotional videos for it saying, come on down and these are the things you'll expect to see and pictures of me in cabins and all sorts. So if you go back in the catalog, you can see some of that old stuff. Yeah. Um, so we worked as uh, kitchen people together, yep. uh, maintenance people, camp counselors, a number of years. I don't know how many years we were actually there together. But uh, I think, I mean, as working together, I think we started at around 13 or 14, I think. Okay. So. And then I know why you went to full time until my first year of university. So I'm going to say five or six years, years, years ago. Yeah. Five or six years we worked in that capacity, maybe seven, possibly. Yeah. And then part of that silliness is that uh, when there's not campers around or you have free time, especially we had a lot of free time when we were uh, in the kitchen. Kitchen or maintenance, yeah. Yeah, you're, kinda, you're responsible for the meals and the cleanup, and then the rest of the camp is taking place wherever, and you kind of go off and do your thing. Um, so one night I found a green one-piece leotard Kind of like a unitard. Yeah, more of a <laughs> unitard than anything, yeah. So then a leotard that uh, didn't have any uh, buttons or zippers in the middle, so it kind of went low down, uh, maybe down to my navel. Back when I was a little bit more uh, skinnier than I am now, you get a picture of uh, 16 or 17-year-old in a unitard, I guess. Bright green. Bright green. Doing his best Mick Jagger. <laughs> yeah, that's probably, what, yeah, what a, you can picture Mick Jagger on the stage with uh, the low-cut shirt or the... Yeah, that's what I have. Captain... I don't know. I can't remember. Captain Cucumber or yes, something? Yes, 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 yes. So there is a picture out there. I know Stephen Michaels. Uh, sometimes he watches these videos too, I think. Uh, if he watches this one, he has the picture. And uh, he's saving it, I guess, for blackmail at some point <laughs> in time. So if that dead guy ever takes off and... Uh, he might have some leverage by putting that. So we kind of just diffused the situation. I publicly admitted that it's out there. Yeah. And it's just uh, 16, 17 year olds being foolish. I'm not sure how much. Cool. I'm not sure how much leverage anybody would have. I'm pretty sure that neither one of us have any shame. <laughs> <laughs> That's true too. There's a lot of that. Yeah. This. yeah. You'd be real. You put your stuff out there and uh, don't worry about it. That's kind of what's going on. Cool, what other cool. questions you got? Uh, oh, goodness. I'm on the spot here. <clears throat> or if you don't have any questions, yeah, no, we I can think, wrap it up. I would think I'm good for today. As I say, I'll, uh, if we get to do this again, I'll uh, prepare myself a little better and uh, dig into the archives. Well, maybe we'll think of something else we can do while you're here. So We Why still not? have some shopping and stuff to do, so maybe we'll oh, yeah. turn a video into that. Uh, well, we're going to think about a good meal today. Yeah, we might even break out the smoker. There you go. All right, so you guys stay safe. Leave your comments for next week, and uh, we'll do something fun and interesting. Awesome. Stay safe. Thanks for letting me be a part. Like, follow? You say like, subscribe, share, and tell all your friends. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? <laughs>